Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me today for this uh, one brand tutorial. Remember when I did a bunch of things and called them one brand tutorials? Using only one brand and it's going to be Milani today. So Milani has tons of things that I love. I think they're very strong in lip products. Um, their complexion stuff is what I'm going to be sort of reacquainting myself with in this video in terms of like foundation and concealer. They're very good at blushes. So we're just going to dive into a full face and talk about everything. So my skin is all prepped today. I've got my serums, moisturizer, eye cream, sunscreen, and I'm going to use some of this Soft Focus Glow Complexion Enhancer in Nude Glow. This is going to act kind of like my primer today, and I have a lot of different products like this, you know, kind of glowy primer skin enhancer type of things. It's really sputtering out of the pump, but it's trying. Okay, we got a little bit. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of the, just the overall appearance of my Believe Beauty glowy primer. It's really pretty. I haven't used this in a long time. It's giving some glow, kind of like Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter vibes, but not quite as much skin tone action going on in it, more just like the shimmer and glow. I like that they've given full warning that there's a pump inside. Do not twist off. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, then I'm gonna use this Conceal and Perfect Foundation, which this has been around for a while. Um, this isn't gonna be like new Milani, although I do have a new palette. Some of this stuff is gonna be classic. And this is the Conceal and Perfect Foundation, medium to full coverage, they say, lightweight oil-free formula in Creamy Natural. I recently repurchased this, and I wanna give it another shot. I never really fell in love with this one when it was new. Um, first off, the claim of foundation plus concealer, that always throws me a little bit because I feel like any foundation that says that is never really that. So that makes me look a little critically at it. But also, I think when this was new, I was probably comparing it quite a bit to Maybelline Superstay, which I think is just really, really good. And I found this to be a little bit thicker and just less natural looking on the skin. So I'm gonna use a beauty blender today and we're gonna see what kind of look we come up with. Okay, I've got a full pump of this. It seems like kind of a lot, but we'll see. Dabbing it in, I got a little bit more appropriate shade, I hope, than what I had before. And we're just gonna bounce this in with a beauty blender. I feel like anytime I use a beauty blender, I do like maybe take away just a hint of the coverage of the product, but it works it into the skin so much better and gives me like the best overall look, the most satisfying look in terms of natural skin-like, etc. It's actually looking pretty good. And the shade is, I think as much of a match as we can get. I still don't think it's actual foundation plus concealer, but I think it's doing pretty well for me in terms of a matte foundation. And I did have the glowy primer underneath that might be helping it look a little more natural right now than I remember it being in the past. And also, of course, blending out with the beauty blender helps, like I said. Trying to pay attention to some of those areas where things can look thicker, like around the brows and under eye and nose. But I actually think that's looking pretty good. They say medium to full coverage. It feels like a strong medium coverage to me right now. Um, I just feel like anything marketing itself as foundation plus concealer should purely be full coverage, but that's just me. It's like, get over it, Em. They named it what they named it. Move on. I feel pleased. I feel okay with what's happening here. I do feel like if I did the same thing with Maybelline Superstay, I think I might have had even a little bit better coverage. But I also repurchased the Conceal and Perfect Concealer, which I had completely decluttered from my collection, and it seems like I did that a long time ago. But we're gonna give this another go around as well. This I got in the shade Ivory Rose. I don't remember ever being really wowed by the coverage here, but I'm gonna do about what I do with usual concealers, maybe just a little bit more and see what we come out with. Again, sometimes it's shade selection. Sometimes that's a problem. It kind of gets a bad taste in your mouth about a certain product. But Milani is such a overall good quality brand. It's like, I, I want to like everything. But at the same time, every brand has their strengths and weaknesses. They also have more of a lightweight, glowy kind of complexion product, which I tried, it seems like last summer that came out. And you know, that was all right but it's kind of like, I want to conquer the foundation. I want to make it work. Getting around the nose. I'm feeling pretty good about the tone. Like, I think it was nicely brightening. I would still pick e.l.f. Camo Concealer over this. 
I'm sorry to say, like it's true. Something about the camo concealer is just even a little bit better coverage than everything else. And I'm at a place on the under eye where I'm thinking, I want to see if I can build it. So I'm gonna go right down in here. I'm not gonna get too close to the eye area, but I'm just gonna see what this does. That helps a little. Like again, I don't apply tons of concealer and then sometimes I'm kind of critical about what they do coverage wise. But I think it's informative for you to know that the same amount or less of e.l.f. camo concealer can do more in terms of covering stuff. There we have it, foundation and concealer. I do feel like I've got good coverage on the skin. I'm not gonna complain about it. I think the primer helped this foundation look a little more natural all over the skin. And I think the beauty blender or just any kind of sponge type application helps as well. This powder from Milani, I'm pretty sure it's on their website. It's called Prep, Set, and Glow Illuminating Transparent Powder. And it reminds me a lot of like an hourglass type of powder. It's got a little bit of glow in it, but it's not anything like major. And I don't have like a loose powder from Milani, so you're not gonna see me bringing something like that up around the under eye, but this I'm just gonna take all over and go with it. I love this. Again, I don't know how accessible it is in the stores, but I do know that it's on Milani's website. Have I seen it on Amazon too? I'll link wherever it is, but see how it gives this kind of like airbrushed glow? Just slight glow. Don't be scared of it. It's not like you're putting highlighter on your skin, but I think that's nice. I've always really liked that product. Then you guys, do you remember when I got these palettes from Milani and they're called all-inclusive eye, cheek, and face palettes. And they've got blushes, bronzer, highlight, and your shadows. And they're kind of trying to be like a Charlotte Tilbury instant look in a palette or like, you know, various other multitasking palettes. This one came in two tones and I tried them both and I reviewed them and I said, you know, this is a great concept. They've got good textures in here. I just hope that they put it out in like a different tone eventually or just continually keep making these but put them out in different color schemes. And guess what? They got another color scheme. So I felt it was my YouTube duty to get it and try it. It's a smoky one, you guys. It says volume 130, smoky. And they just have this, all right? So there was not like multiple skin tones in this, just this. The bronzer does look cooler than what they offered before. We've got a couple blushes, highlight, and the eyeshadows. And I'm going to be testing this out and seeing how it goes. So the bronzer looks really light. So let's see, pick some up with my BK Beauty 107 brush, which I love to use for my powders and bronzers. Hmm, I'm seeing it a little bit actually. But in terms of like thinking about the whole brand of Milani, I know they've got some good like matte single bronzers. And also I think one of the overall strengths of the brand as a whole is definitely blush. So their rose imprinted blushes are really nice if you like, like just a matte, beautiful pigmented blush. They've got some great colors of that. They've been around for a while and they're just awesome. And then also their baked blushes. You know, Luminoso is classic. People have made that iconic <laughs> and plenty of other shades in that line too. And they've got some great highlighters as well. Um, there's an individual highlight that I have, the one that I have in that mini size, I think is so good. I'm really building up this bronzer, you guys. I'm going kind of heavy handed with it because it's so light, but you see I'm getting a little, little contour. It does seem buildable. But this highlight, I mean, this is one of my favorites of all time. The Strobe Light Instant Glow Powder and Afterglow, like put that up against any major high-end highlight. So just because I'm using this palette, which is kind of me trying it out, there's still other great things just in the line. But I had to order this off of Milani's website, you guys. I didn't see it anywhere else. There's that bronzer. I feel like that's as much as I can do with it, gang. Then we're gonna try the blushes. Um, first, let's go with the softest one. These both have a shimmer to them. This one has the most shimmer. Let's try this lighter one. I feel like I'm gonna love these. Lighter one gets to go on first just so we can make sure we can see it. That's that's pretty. That's delicate. I like it. I just really like that they did go ahead and put out a completely different color scheme. You know, it's smoky. It, it's no doubt cooler. You know, they're working in black and silver, but I would still encourage him to keep going, you know, and keep putting out the light and dark depths because this really isn't going to be dark enough for a lot of people. Just saying. And then this blush right here, a little more color, a little more shimmer. Oh my gosh. I love, oh yes, rosy goodness. Absolutely.
So there's your bolder cheek and there's your softer cheek. Both show up beautifully well. Really happy with both. This one's going bold too. Symmetry. I love it. I love a good pigmented blush. This does have some glow. It's showing. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the highlight. It looks like it's going to be super shiny. And it is. <laughs> wow. Okay. You got some work to do, little setting brush. It just became a setting brush and no longer just a setting brush. That's light application right there. I like it, but the skin kind of needed it. You know, we had this Conceal and Perfect stuff all over. Looking up close, it's buffing in pretty well, too. Um, like, it's not looking thick or chunky. It's a pretty smooth shimmer formula in here. Um, I'm going to take whatever's left on the brush. You know how we do? We kind of swirl up the area above the brows, and it just kind of gives a nice look. Okay, I don't still have one, but Milani um, Make It Last setting spray is really good. I love the Make It Last. I think it's... What, what is going on here? I love that formula. I think it's comparable to higher end, like, long wear setting sprays. Kind of on par with Urban Decay All Nighter, you know? I think it's really good. What I have right now is this revitalizing one, the supercharged, that smells like oranges. And this is nice too, plus it has a really good scent. It is just pure, accurate orange juice smell. But that also, I think, gives my skin a little extra glow which I think it can use, just, you know, the surface of the skin making everything look a bit more natural. But I'm loving the look so far. I love the blush and highlight. This palette really transformed the finish on the skin, and I'm here for it. So what I don't have right now are any Milani brow products, so I'm just going to skip over this part and try to keep it brand focused. I'll use some random other products, and then we will continue with this palette for the eye look. And of course, Milani eyeshadow primer, one of the best things in the line, period. Brows are the red Revlon Color Stay Brow Creator in dark brown and then NYX Control Freak Brow Gel on top. And now the Milani Eyeshadow Primer. Um, this is one of the essentials from the brand. I mean, if we're talking must try things, get a rose blush or a baked blush, get the eyeshadow primer, get you an understatement lip liner and the lipstick in Teddy Bear or one of their matte formulas if you're into that. Uh, I do have a new lip thing that I'm going to be trying in this video. Back to this puppy here. We've got a dark shade, a really shimmery shade, and a light shade. So, um, in this kind of situation where there's not really that matte, mid-tone, kind of started out in the crease color, what I will do is pat on my black shade straight in the outer corner. So this is kind of like, it's got a little sparkle. It might We might call it a soft black, but it's not creating a lot of fallout as I get it on my brush and we just start patting this on the outer corner and then we can flip our brush and get it in the outer crease and then we can come in with a blending brush and kind of work that around a little bit but yeah it is a little tricky when this is the color scheme and there's not really a mid-tone although we do have the bronzer so the bronzer could come into play too not having any issues with this black getting out of control or feeling like I'm having fallout of any kind. My brush is able to dip in without any excess. So see what we're doing here? Flip your brush around, really target the crease. Then I'm going to bring in my usual crease brush without anything added. And we're going to go into that and see if we can kind of shear it and move it. Blend it around. See that? We're getting it softened up a bit. And then I will go into this bronze shade with that brush, and this will really soften that out and kind of ease our way out of the black. Nice. Without really changing the overall tone of the look. That was a rain alert. Again, I'm not jumping out of my seat for these. It's just been raining so much these days, I expect it. Okay, there we go. I'm pretty pleased with that. Even though, you know, this is kind of tricky, like I wouldn't necessarily hand it off to a beginner, this color scheme, just because they're so far apart and one is black. I'm taking that black, a little bit of it with my small pointed brush, just to make sure I've really got the darkest part in the crease and we're working up from that a little bit. 
but I do think the earlier palettes that they released like this are a little more user-friendly on the eyeshadows. I still think we're gonna get a pretty look. Okay, so there we are with the black blended with a little bronzer on top. Let's bop into this light shade here and just use some of that as a highlight. I don't want to use too much. A lot wants to get on the brush there. That can kind of smooth out a little bit of your blending also. In my opinion, if we're just talking Milani eyeshadows, the absolute best thing that they have is their Ungilded Mattes palette. I love that. The textures are so good. The tones are so nice, especially if you like a little warmth. Like, it's probably one of my top favorite palettes, period. Just so you know, that's another thing you need. When I was saying you need the Milani eyeshadow primer, you need to get a blush, you need to get a lip liner and a lip color, you need the Ungilded Mattes, too. Let's go into this glitzy friend right here. See what it can do right off the brush. Okay, pretty. And you know, it is kind of a smoky vibe. It's not a pure silver. It's a little bit darker. Like even though it looks like it's really catching the light there with the sparkle, it's like a little bit of a dimmed down silver and it helps kind of maintain the, the smokiness. I'm into that. It does have some micro fine, like little shimmer particles you can really see but I'm not having a hard time getting it on the lid. I'm very pleased with that. That looks really nice. One other thing we could do here is take a smaller brush into that light shade or even our highlighter, which yeah, I might ultimately do that, go into the highlight with a small brush and spotlight that inner corner. A couple of other great things in Milani's line. If you need an eyeliner and you want the longest wearing um, liquid liner, the Stay Put Matte 17 Hour, um, I have it in black. I've repurchased this multiple times. I gave birth in this. It did not move. I cried in this, you know, it just, it can take it, y'all. It's, it's good. So I'm going to go ahead and use that because I love it so much. Like, it's just opaque, intense black. It's no frills, no gimmicks. And then I also like, as you're going to see here, I'm going to use it a little on the lower lash line. I really like the Stay Put pencils, too. They're retractable. And there's a dark brown called Semi Sweet that I think is just so nice. It has a little blender tip as well. Okay, there we are with a slight little kick it up wing. And that's the thing, your wings will stay with this. They won't go anywhere. They won't fade. They won't rub off if you get a watery eye and have to rub it. Okay, so there's my eyeliner. I've been talking about it for years. Love it. And then here's my pencil. This is in the semi-sweet shade. Of course, they've got a variety of shades. And I'm just going to, like, go with it right down here. This is such a dark brown. It's got, like, a little shimmer in it, kind of. But it's not going to be like, whoa, there's the brown in contrast with the black. It's just going to look kind of dark down here. And see how I'm kind of, like, going right under the wing and blending this onto my lower lash line. We also have a built-in sharpener on the end if you want to point your tip up a little bit more, but just take this little blender guy, soften, soften, and this will stay all day. I mean, you can really smudge it out if you get to it soon enough. You can't, like, draw your line and then leave it there for 15 minutes and go back and decide you want to smudge it. you got to smudge it right away. But once you do, you will have that kind of smudgy liner effect. It looks great. So now for mascara, we got this guy who was just talked about in the last video, the Anti-Gravity Highly Rated, which I do think has been the mascara from Milani that I've gotten along best with. Mascara has been sort of a low point for this brand for me. Um, I'm just saying for me because my lashes have a lot of needs and not everyone's do. I want a lot out of it because my lashes aren't like incredible on their own. I want them to curl and they don't like to curl and I want them to look thick and they're not that thick and I want them to be long and they're not that long. You get the picture. I want a mascara to do absolutely everything. This has been the best one that I've tried from Milani, um, but still in the scope of all my mascaras, I don't think it's quite as good as some of the other current favorites right now. Like It Cosmetics Superhero, like Callie Ray, Come Hell or High Water, like um, Essence Double Trouble. So just keep that in mind, but it does build up quicker and better than anything else from this brand. I don't need to go on and on because I'm assuming 
Y'all have been just great and loyal and keeping up on all the videos, and you already heard me talk a bunch about this. Shiseido eyelash curler, by the way. It's money. You need it. You need it. The best eyelash curler. You can get it from Sephora. You can get it from Ulta, at least on their websites. Gosh, I haven't been in person in a beauty store in a long time. Probably for the best. But in case you were wondering about this brush, it's rubber bristle hourglass shape. So think like the shape of Too Faced Better Than Sex and all that. Oh, another great one is my, my Aldi mascara, my Lacura one. But it's that hourglass design, but the bristles are way, way shortened up. I'm gonna do a lash today because this smoky eye, I think, just needs it. I'm also gonna do a lower lash mascara. It's gonna be my Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water. So I'm gonna pop off and do those things and then come back for lips. These are some red cherry lashes. Iconic lash from like the other house that I used to live in. But um, I think they're the 43 style and they just, you know, finish the look beautifully. I really didn't wanna get too dark on the under eye area. I wanted the lift to be, you know, mainly above the eye, you know, it's it's early, sun's not out yet, I need some help. So lip things, let's just talk about this for a second. Those new lipsticks in the pretty packaging, the matte lipsticks, those are a yes, okay? You can get those in the nude color family or the more colorful ones. We've talked about them here, they're a yes from me. These understatement lip liners, um, the shades Cinnamon Statement and Nude Statement, you get those, all your nude needs will be met. Uh, they are not quite as long wearing as the Revlon ones, but they are still fantastic. They're up there, okay? They're pretty darn good with staying power and they go on very smoothly and the tones are just so pretty for nudes. The Keep It Full Lip Plumpers, a great drugstore alternative to Buxom, okay? So those glosses, they have some that are a little more opaque. Think rosewood, think that kind of like soft nude colored one, actually surprisingly opaque. Um, I've got this shimmery one here that I might try to work on top of what I'm doing today called Nude Shimmer, but this is the new thing. This is the wild card that we're going to try. It's the Ludicrous Matte Lip Crayon, and I got this off of the website, shade 120, can't even. Okay, got a little rounded tip. It's trying to be a Super Stay Matte Ink Crayon, so let's see. Neat thing about the Super Stay Matte Ink Crayons is that when they go on the lips, they are kind of like thin and light, and this really does have a similar feel. Revlon has some copycat ones, and they're like a little less light feeling. Hmm. I love the color. I really dig that kind of cool pink. Kind of reminds me of Lead the Way from Maybelline, but a little less pink. Let's compare. Yeah, Lead the Way, just a little more pinky. This one's just a little bit softer, what I have on the lips now. And really, if I want to be gauging the staying power of this, and it's new to me today, um, I probably shouldn't go putting a gloss on top of it. Just know these glosses are great. They have a little cooling sensation and they are like the drugstore alternative to your Buxom lip glosses. But judging from what's going on on my hand here, like I kind of rubbed a little early, but it's setting in place. It's going to set and hopefully not wear off real soon. I'm doing just a little bit of translucent powder on the T-zone. I love that cheek. The cheek is great. Let's take this headband off. My hair's still just a little wet from last night's shower. Not like wet, but you know, it's had a whole lot of nothing done to it. You've heard me talk about all the essentials that like didn't get used in this video, but I, I liked this palette. This had a lot going for it. It had the potential to create, you know, a dramatic eye look. And also in there is a blinding highlight, two beautiful blushes and a bronzer. <clears throat> that could have been a little deeper, but I'll take it. It was workable enough for me, but may not be workable for everyone. I think they should keep putting out the two tones of their color family palettes here. But that was a high point for me today. I really liked it. I think I'm gonna like this lip color. It does not feel like it's budget. Well, a little bit's coming off, but it feels comfy and the color is great. Milani Eyeshadow Primer, yes, you need that. The eyeliners, both of them, the pencil and the liquid were great. I'm kind of dancing around these products because I, I like them and I think it's going to probably last well. I just think the claims are a little overboard. If you don't have something that's totally full coverage, why are you calling it a foundation plus concealer? And then the concealer, I just feel like didn't do everything e.l.f. would do, which is probably fine for some people, but I still feel like I look good, you know? I feel like it did the job, definitely did the job. Like I would put Maybelline Super Stay over this. I would put Catrice foundations, both the liquid coverage and the um, pump style one 
done over this, but it's still decent and I do think it looked even better on the skin with this glowy stuff underneath. This would be a product where I think there's a lot of this out on the market. You got the L'Oreal Lumi Glotions, you've got the Believe Beauty primer that's got that glow. Various brands are doing a glowy kind of primer. It doesn't have to be this one in my opinion, but something like that can assist this. It's just interesting how my complaint with this can kind of be a cakiness factor, but yet it's still not the most full coverage thing on the market. But truly, I'm pleased as punch with my overall look here. I think Milani's got a lot of good things happening, and I was very excited that they went ahead and put out the all-inclusive palette in another shade family. Now we need Barry. Um, what other ideas can we give them? The first one was already kind of bronzy, but you know, a berry one, a plum look, maybe cool, but more everyday tones. Like it doesn't have to be black, but it could be like a cream, a dusty rose, and then like a medium grayish taupey color or something like that. I don't know, you guys. I need to let you go. This has been long enough. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this was informative. Feel free to give all your feedback in the comments section about what things you love and don't love from Bolani, Bolani, Milani, and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.